Hey guys, this is Sharad with Resimply. This is going to be demo of Resimply 2.0 version. We'll go over some basic features and how everything works. So when you first log in, you see this is the dashboard. You're taken into the dashboard page. So you can track all your SMS that you've sent this week versus last week, calls that you made this week versus last week. What's your average call time for call this week? And uh, how many touches do you need to get a deal? How many assigned leads do you and how many open leads do you have? Open leads are any leads that where you received an SMS or an email or SMS or a call from the lead that you haven't responded back. And then you have your comment section right here. So this is your, think of it as your team's internal inbox. So any communication that you're having with your team, sending them message, and then any message that you're getting tagged on will all be logged over here. And then you can pin any message. So you can see all the pinned messages here, any message that you want to highlight, and then you can reply from within here. And then once you reply, the activity for that specific lead will get updated. And then these are all the tasks that are assigned to you. These are the pending ones. These are the ones that you've completed. And then on this side, you have your communication log. So communication log keeps track of all your incoming calls, outgoing calls, incoming SMS, outgoing SMS, emails, RVM for any leads that you're assigned to. So any lead that you're assigned to and any communication that you have with the lead will be right here. So you can keep track of everything that's going on with your lead. So this is the main page when you come in. So the goal of this page is to be able for you to manage 90% of your business from within this page without having to go into multiple pages. And then if you have any new activity, then you can just toggle over here and see if you have any, just any new activity since the last time you logged in. And then you can clear new. And then if you're the main user on the account, then you can uh, look at somebody else's activity in the team. And But your sub user do not have access to somebody else's account. So you as the main user can look at other people's activity. So this is the main dashboard. And then from there, I want to go over quickly what different options we have here. Profile, billing, and manage user. So manage user, you can add user. You can add them to multiple markets. You can manage multiple markets. You can assign them to multiple roles within your company. You can add them to different campaigns that you have running, and then you can give them access to specific leads. So you can either give them admin access, and then you can choose which module you want to give them access to. So if you don't want to give them access to lead, then you can leave this disabled. Or if you want to give them access to leads, how much access you want to give them view only, full access, and you want to give them access to only specific leads or all leads or only leads that they're assigned to. So if you give them access to assigned lead, then they will only see the leads that are assigned to them. And then you can also control access by different lead status. So if you have somebody on your team and you don't want to give them access to, so like, for example, your disposition manager, and you do not want to give access to your disposition manager for, let's say, until a property gets under contract. So then when your disposition manager logs in, they will not see any leads that are in no contact made, contact made appointment set or offer made. So they will only see leads that are in under contract or assigned to buy it. And then there's all these other modules that you can decide if you want to give them access to or not. And there's some other permissions. You can give access to somebody. You can choose whether you want to give access to somebody to delete leads, whether they should be able to buy additional credits. Can they export leads? Can they delete somebody else's comment? Can they edit somebody else's comment? And if they have access to financial tab. So this is how you manage your users. And then you can manage multiple markets. So if you're in more than one market, which a lot of recent users are, then you can add as many markets as you want. And then you can assign specific team member to specific market. So if you notice it in Chicago, I am the acquisition manager, I'm the owner, and I have a different project manager. But if I go into my general market, then I have three different acquisition managers, one owner, and two different project managers. So you can do a lot of customization on how you want to give access to somebody, how much access you want to give, and what specific leads you want to give access to. And then moving on, you can manage all your calling, incoming outbound calls. You can manage your text, email, and RVM from within recently. So essentially, you can completely replace CallRail, which is what a lot of recently users are using before they switch over to recently. So you can go ahead and buy a phone number. So you can type in the area code where you want to buy the phone number. I'm in Indiana, so I'm going to buy 219. Then you choose whether you want to use this phone number for sellers or buyers, and then you assign it a marketing title. So for this would be generally would be your list name. So let's say this is my tax list. 
Lead source would be, you know, whether you're using it for direct mail marketing, what marketing type are you using this for? And then the call flow, you assign it. A call flow is basically once a call comes into you on this number that you're purchasing, how do you want the call to be routed? And then for this specific campaign, who do you want the acquisition manager to be? So let me go ahead and do this. And then you can choose for this specific marketing campaign. I only want the acquisition manager to be me. So any leads that come for this specific campaign, I will be the acquisition manager for all the leads. So they're not going to round drop in. But if you want the leads to round drop in between, let's say myself and another team member, then you can choose the two team members and the leads will round drop in between those two team members. And you can do that for another role also, how you want the leads to be assigned to your team member. And you can set up your call flow. So call flow would be as you get a call on one of these simply number, how you want the call to be routed. So you can choose, you know, do you want the calls to be recorded? Do you, when the call comes in, do you want to display the callers? caller ID or do you want to show the be simply phone number as the caller ID? So by default, it selects to the callers phone number, but you can change this. You can toggle this off and it will display a simply number. And then you can choose based on the time zone that you're in. So let's say I'm in Eastern Standard Time. I can choose all weekdays, all days. I want the call to be forwarded to, you know, follow this call flow. So I can say, you can set up your IVR where if somebody presses one, you know, they can be routed to somebody on your team. If they press two, then they can be routed to a voicemail, for example. A lot of our investors that we work with, if they're doing SMS marketing, what they would do is uh, if somebody wants to sell their property, then they would have the caller press one. If uh, they want to be taken off the marketing list, then they would have the caller press two. So you can set that up. You can do, you can have the call be forwarded to a single forward. You can have it simultaneously ring on up to five phone numbers. You can have it round robin between five different phone numbers, or you can have a call go straight to voice. Or you can choose all four, you know, some of the investors that we work with use. And then you can choose if you get a missed call, what SMS should go out. If you get a missed call, what RBM should go out. And if it's a repeat caller, do you want the call to be forwarded to previously connected number? Or do you want the call to be routed to a specific phone number? Or do you want the call to be routed to someone on your team based on the role in the company? So you can also do that for that specific call flow. And then you can set up your non-business hours. So if you set up weekdays between 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. or all day weekdays, you want the call to be routed to, for example, a call center at call porter. But after certain hours on weekend, you want the call to go to your cell phone or somebody else, then you can set that non-business hours also. So once you set up your phone number, then you can set up your email template, SMS template, and RVM recording that you want to send out. And then you can also set up your lead intake question. So you can completely customize your lead intake question that you have, which I'll go over in a few minutes. And you can also customize your questions for inventory. If you're managing, if you're doing rehabs, then you can do that. And then you can also manage your buyer. So you can completely customize your buyer intake form also. So let's say once you've set it up, you've customized all your questions, you know, you can add a section, you can move these around, you can move the section around, add questions, add sections. But once you've done that, then this is what your lead management CRM part of recently looks like. So it's very neat and clean. It's easy for you to follow. Basically the goal is to move the lead from left to right. So from no contact made, contact made, appointment set, offer made under contract, and then assigned to buyer. And then anytime you get a call on any of recently number, the system is automatically going to create a lead within the system. And it's going to assign the lead source and the campaign name based on the phone number that somebody called in at. So for example, this lead, when this was created, I received a call on my direct mail absentee list number. This is a number. So it automatically created a lead for me. And then based on that, uh, this is my lead intake question that I have that I can fill out. And if I enter the property address, it pulls some information from public records, you know, based on the bedrooms, bathroom, your square footage, lot size. And then it tracks all your analytics right here of when the lead was created, when did you go on an appointment, if you made an offer, if you got the property in the contract, and if you got something assigned to a buyer, when did you do that? So we go to one of the properties. So if you look here, it has all the information filled out. The lead was created on November 23rd, went on appointment on July 7th, made an offer on July 7th, got it under contract July 7th. And then, you know, again, this is the dummy account, scheduled to close on July 7th, and then we assigned it on July 7th. And this is all the information. This is all the activity. I can call the lead from right here, and I can 
text the lead from right here, or I can also email the lead from right here. And then I can manage all my appointment and tasks right here. So I can see all my pending tasks, all my completed tasks, all the appointments that I have. And then this is my file section. So the cool thing with files is you can completely replace Google Drive. Uh, so I can go ahead, let's say if I have, uh, I want to add a folder, let's say pictures. So I can do this and then I can select right here. Yeah, I can choose this folder and I can do add file and then I can choose the files that I want to upload. So let's say if I want to upload my property pictures right here, uh, let me go ahead and select some. So I've uploaded these pictures right here. So what's really cool is now I can go ahead and I can click right here and I can create a shareable link. And there are three kinds of shareable links. Either you can create a link for somebody to only view files. You can create a link for somebody to view files and add new files or view, add new files and delete files. So view files would be if you're sharing a link with, let's say you get this property under contract and you wanna send this link out to uh, your cash buyer. So then you would send this link out and this is what it would look like. So the buyer would open this and then they can just browse through the pictures that you have for that specific property. And you would use the shareable link of view and add new files would be if you created a link and if you were working with a seller and the seller wasn't comfortable for you to come over and look at the property, what you can do is you can just create this link and send it to the seller. And then the seller can directly upload the pictures on that link. So let me go ahead and quickly show you. So add folder, seller pictures. Okay, so I'm going to select this folder. I'm going to enable this and I'm going to create view and add new files link. And I'm going to open up right here. So this is basically what it's going to look like to the seller. So it's going to say the seller folder name. It's going to say uh, they have access to view all files and add new files. So they can click when they're, they can open it on their phone or computer. They can click on add file and they can go ahead and select pictures that they have of the house and then they can upload the pictures from their computer or from their phone once they've uploaded the pictures they cannot delete it once they've uploaded any pictures it's within the system then you come back here you refresh it and then you'll notice the seller pictures folder will now have these two pictures so again once you've received the pictures then you can disable the link uh, but in either case the seller only had access to view or add pictures so they cannot remove any pictures from the folder. So this is really cool, especially given COVID situation right now and a lot of sellers are not comfortable and buyers also moving more to virtual business. So you can upload, basically replace your Google Drive, Dropbox and manage everything within Resimply and everything stays organized within each folder for each property. And then you can also do eSign. You can send, upload your purchase agreement and you can send it to your buyer, to your seller, all within recently. So here, I'm going to go ahead and quickly do this. One at recently.com. Tom Brady, Sharad, two at recently.com. So I do this. So it's going to open up the template that I'd uploaded. So you can see this is my information. And then this is where I'm going to sign. And if I need to add anything, I can say, okay, I need, you know, to initial here. And if I need the other person, Tom Brady, in this case, to initial, I can drag this and I can drag more information, text box. So you can do a lot of customization. Uh, again, this would be a complete replacement of DocuSign. Uh, that's what a lot of our investors that we work with, they come over for DocuSign and then start using the Simply eSign feature. And then the cool thing is you don't have to pay a monthly subscription. It's only paper contracts. So it's only 95 cents per document. So if you're doing one per month, then you only pay 95 cents. If you don't do any, then you don't pay anything. Or if you do 10, then you only pay, you know, $9.50. So there's no monthly fee for this. Cool thing is, so once you send a document for eSign and it's signed and completed, it gets automatically saved within eSign folder. So you don't have to upload, download anything. It automatically gets things up. Let me see if I have one saved up. So this right here is your eSign folder. This is where you would upload your templates that you're sending to your buyer or seller regularly. And then this would be your document. So for example, if I go to this property, you would see this eSign that I sent out. This was sent out. This was the document name. It was sent out on June 18 and its status is sent. So we have three status sent partially signed and then completely signed. So partially sent would be where you just send the document, you haven't done anything. 
and then you can go ahead and I believe you can resend it and you get a lot of information. So you can see the folder timeline when it was created, it was sent and it was waiting for signature. So if you know the other person hasn't received it, then you can click resend invite. It's going to send the invite again. You can customize this email and it'll go out and then you can track it and it tracks everything. So once they sign it, it actually gets the IP address and then the email address that they signed from. So you can actually use it as a legal binding document. So going back and then other thing you can do is as you hover on each of these different lead status, you'll see that it gives you some more information and you can call text email for this lead on a trip campaign, mark it as a hot lead or put it as a favorite without actually going into a lead. So you can do this, you can call the lead and you don't have to go into the lead. And then as you move lead from one status to another, for this one, I'm moving to appointment set and you can create new appointments. You can sync up your Google calendar. So let me show that to you really quick. So I go in my calendar, I can choose my availability. So I can say, all right, based on my time zone. So let's say I can move it to Eastern Pacific, Eastern Standard Time. I am going to be available Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, but this is the time Monday, I'm going to be available 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. for appointment. And Tuesday through Friday, I'm going to be available 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And Saturday and Sunday, I'm not going to be available. So this is my availability. So if I go into a lead, let's say if I'm trying to set up an appointment for myself, I click on add appointment. So appointment for Sharad. And let's say first, I'm going to try to set up an appointment for 17. So you notice it doesn't show any time slots available. Same thing for Sunday, doesn't show any time slots available. But if I go into Monday, it's gonna show me 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. available. And you notice it's automatically defaulted to my time zone that I have available. So if you have team members that are in multiple time zone, you can each manage your own different time zone. So by default, if you know there was somebody else in my team, uh, yeah, see so if you look at this, my project manager, uh, she has a different time zone from me. So my time zone Eastern, but my project manager time zone is specific standard time. So the availability would be based on her time zone, not based on my time zone. So I can do this. I can go ahead and set up an appointment. I can set up seller reminder if I want to send a reminder to the seller, maybe an hour or two before the appointment via email or SMS. I can do that. And I can also have a reminder sent to me, which is that by default, you get an email from me simply an hour before the appointment. And the cool thing is, so once you set up an appointment for, let me go ahead and set one up for myself and I'm gonna do, let's say 8 a.m. to, I'm gonna do 11, 8 to, 8 to 11 a.m. July 19th. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this. And if I try to set up another appointment, if I try to set up another appointment for July 19th, it's not letting me book an appointment from 9 to 11. It's showing that as unavailable. So I can only book an appointment starting at 11 a.m., which is the time that I'm available on July 19. So it's really cool. And then it syncs up with your Google Calendar. So any appointment that you make in Re simply gets pushed to your Google Calendar. And then if you've set up some other notifications in your Google Calendar, then you get those. But you also get notifications from Re simply So this is the appointment that I set up. And if I uh, click on it, it takes me back to that lead where I set up the appointment. So, and related tab is tab for seller where you're buying more than one property from. So if you have same seller, but they are multiple properties, then they would all get linked up and show up in related tab based on the phone number. Because if you have a seller, they'll have the same phone number and you'll add them as a new lead and it will all get linked up in related property. So if I go into 7651 property, this is in sold, but you can see related property. It shows me the other two properties. And if I go back here, it would take me back to the one that we were in before. And team would be the team that's actually working on it. So who is the acquisition manager? Who is the owner of this lead? And who is the project manager? And if you have uh, for this specific lead or this specific campaign, if you have multiple people that round robin between this lead, then you can switch from one person to another. And then we have a basic calculator added also. Advanced calculator is going to be coming out in a week or two, but you can calculate based on 70% of any formula. So I can put 150,000, 70%, or I can do 72%. And then you can do repairs based on percentage. So I can do 15% of the ARV. 
So this is my fix and flip maximum allowable offer. So my max offer, if I'm going to be doing fix and flip on this property, is going to be 85,500. If I'm going to be wholesaling, let's say I want to make 15,000 on this, then my maximum allowable offer would be 70,500 on this and 85,500 would be the maximum when I'm selling it to a fix and flip investor. This is how much they would want to pay. So the difference between these two would be your, your profit. So, and you can also add tags right here. So you can do both sides, cancel, contact attempted. You can add these tags and then you can filter based on the tags. You can filter based on when the lead was created, who the lead is assigned to, the market that the lead is in, and a bunch of other filter options that I'll go into. And then in task, you have, you can mark it as a hot lead, send direct mail. So you can also send a direct mail to the lead. This would be somebody that, you know, you've been trying to get in touch with and you haven't been able to get in touch with that lead. You can send a postcard to them. You can put drip campaign, mark the lead as favorite, send for e-sign, block the number. So if you're getting a spam call from a number, you can do that. Add different call forward. So different call forward would be if you have this specific seller, uh, and you want all the calls from this number to be forwarded to you directly on your cell phone rather than, you know, go to back to the call flow, then you can also do that. Uh, and then you can delete the lead also right here. So if I go back into my lead, so you have a bunch of really cool filters. So you can filter based on the markets, different markets based on the role. So if I want to see all the leads that are acquisition manager, that Sharad is the acquisition manager. So I can do filter based on that. I can filter leads based on, you know, uh, leads that have tags assigned of both sides and new. So I can filter based on that. And I can filter based on leads that have an active trip campaign, leads that have uh, without any pending tasks, leads that have pending tasks, when the lead was created, how long the lead has been open for, you know, whether it's a hot lead or not, and include warm leads and dead leads. So if you want to see all the leads that were created, this month, let's see. Uh, and then you can see, I don't have any leads that were created this month. So if I filter back to, let's say May 1st, and I do this, so I can see I had 32 leads that were created between May 1st and today. And 29 of those are still in no contact made, one is in contact made, and one is in warm lead, one is in dead lead. So this way you can get a really good clarity. What we do in our business is we audit our leads on a weekly basis just to see all the leads that came in this week, what's happening with them, where did the leads end up going? And if you know there's anything that somebody on my team moved to dead lead that they should not have, and you can do that. And you can also affect the leads based on the lead source and campaign name. So if you wanna see all the leads that came from direct mail, and you can do that. It will show you all the leads that came from direct mail. So 33 of my 66 leads came from direct mail. So exactly half. And then you can filter based on the leads that have both name and address missing. So you can see these are the leads where you have no name and no address for them. Or if you want to see the leads where you have only name missing, but you have address available. So you can see if there's any lead and you can filter by that. And uh, there's some other filter options that you can apply. And then you can also talk with between list view and uh, grid view of the lead. And then when you're in any lead page, you can go to the next lead without having to go back to the main lead page. You'll just keep going back to the next lead that you have. So uh, this is the CRM part of Recently. Uh, and I want to go over the KPIs. So you can manage your complete KPIs within Recently. So you can see, you can set your goal for the year, how many deals you want to do and how many you've actually completed. What's your goal for revenue this year? And what's your actual revenue that you've completed? What's your net income goal for the year and how much you've completed? How each of your marketing channels are performing? What's your cost per lead, cost per deal? How much money you spent in marketing? How much revenue generated? What's your marketing ROI? For last 12 months, where all your leads, appointments, offer and deals, what is your uh, trend for those? Where all your leads are coming from? Marketing ROI would be what's the best marketing ROI. So every dollar that you put in marketing, which marketing channel is giving you the highest ROI. And this tells you for different marketing that you have, that you're spending money on how much money you're spending versus how much money you're making. All the SMS that you've sent in last seven days, all the incoming and outbound calls in last seven days you've made. And then you can do a bunch of in-depth an analytics based on uh, so this is a very high level and this would be the detailed KPI behind it. So you can get some really detailed information based on each campaign that you're running in your business, 
leads, appointments, offers, under contracts, deals, the conversion KPI, what's your cost per lead, cost per deal, and for every dollar that you put in marketing, how much money comes back into the business. And there's some other KPIs that you can do. And then we also have list stacking built in within recently. So you can upload your list and then you can, we do USPS vacancy check every month. So we tell you how many of uh, your properties are vacant and you can filter for all the vacant properties once you upload within recently, and then you can select them and send them to direct mail. And there's some other uh, options coming. You can export them, skip trace, add tags, remove tags back to list, remove it, mark them as opt-out or remove them from opt-out. And then once you go into it, it's also going to link up directly with your lead. So any properties that you have, uh, let me go ahead and do this. Uh, so you can see of everything that you have in list stacking, which of the properties are also in leads. So you can see these are the ones that are also in my leads. So this way you're not marketing any of these properties that have already converted into a lead for you. And then you can manage your inventory. If you're doing fix and flip, you can manage your inventory and see what stage they're in, your sold properties and basic rental properties. You can see all your call logs within recently for all your incoming and outbound calls, SMS and everything that's all the communication that's happening with the lead. And again, this is a detailed task view for everything that is assigned to you. You can filter by everything that's past you, due to date, and then anything that's due in the future. And then you can filter for a different specific task name. You can filter by property address, filter by property type, and you know for a specific team member. And global tasks are tasks that are assigned automated tasks as you move lead from one stage to another. So the perfect example for this is once you get a property under contract, there's certain tasks that you need to perform. So think of it, sending contract to escrow company, calling insurance company to get an insurance estimate, calling a utility company to make sure that it's not on septic or it's not, you know, a well system. So you can set up all those tasks based on the stage of the lead. And once the property moves to that stage, then all of those tasks get assigned automatically to whoever you want with the due date that you want. So you don't have to keep setting them up over and over again. I can show you for one of the leads. So you can see this one is under contract and I have nine assigned tasks. So once I move it to assign to buyer and I can put my assignment fee, 150,000, that'll be nice. And then you see it went up from nine to 15. So based on the stage that the lead is in, there are six new tasks that got assigned. Once I move the lead from under contract to assign to buyer. So those are all automated. You don't have to think about it. They just get updated automatically. Another really, really important feature in Resimply is your drip campaign. This is one of the most used features within Resimply. And if you've been investing for some time, you realize you've heard of it several times that 80% or more of your deals are going to come from follow-up. I know it's true in my business. It does happen every now and then. We'll send out a list to our direct mail and then we'll call somebody and they'll just, they happen to get our postcard or letter when they were ready to sell. And they call us and say, hey, I'm ready to sell. But I would tell you 80% of our deals come from follow-up. Somebody calls and said, hey, I'm not interested right now, but you know, call me in a couple of months or you know, I'm not ready to sell for six months. So that's where drip campaign comes in. So what you can do is you can click on add new drip campaign. This would be, let's say hot lead follow. And then you can tell the system that from the time you set up, two hours after you set up, you wanna send out an SMS. And you can choose if you wanna skip the step on weekends and public holidays. Some people don't like sending messages on weekends and public holidays. So if you skip it, what's gonna happen is if you had a message that was supposed to go out on Sunday and you have this enabled, it's gonna skip it on Sunday and send the message out on Monday instead. So if you had a message that was scheduled to go out on, let's say Sunday at 10 o'clock in the morning, it's gonna add 24 hours to it and send it out on Monday at 10 in the morning and all the other steps will get pushed out. So basically everything will get pushed out by 24 hours. And then you can totally customize this. You can say, hi, first name, my name is, and then you can do acquisition manager. Uh, so you can, Customize it to even to your team members where you can say, hi, first name, my name is acquisition manager. So if I am the acquisition manager and I'm sending it to, let's say, seller named Joe, the message is going to go out and say, hi, Joe, my name is Sharad. And if the acquisition manager is Tom and he sends the same 
assigns the same drip campaign, it's going to go out. Hi, Joe. My name is Tom, and I am interested in your property at property street address. So it would be it just pick up property street address one two three Main Street. Would you be interested in selling? Right. So you can set this up. Sorry, just a pet peeve. I don't like being that red dotted line. And then you can add another step. You can add unlimited steps. So this is two hours from the time you set up. And then you can say, let's say three days later, I want to send uh, another SMS, right? And I can do this. Hey, just following up again. This is acquisition manager. Okay. And you can do this. And you can keep adding steps. You can set up a task and you can remind somebody based on the role. You know, generally you want to assign it to acquisition manager. Uh, and then you can choose the time. Let's say you want to wait another week to send this out. And then you can say call the lead. And then you can do another step. You can do RVM, you can do email, you can do direct mail, and you can build it out. And then what you do is once you go into any lead, let me see this, then you go in right here. You say activate drip campaign, and then you choose whichever drip campaign you want to set up based on the situation. So you, what you'll notice is you'll set up a lot of situational drip campaign. You'll get some leads where they call in, you get their name, you get their address, and then you'll get some leads where they call in, you have their name, but no address. And you get some leads where you have no name, no property information. You're setting up your drip campaigns based on different situations, how much information you have, what stage the lead was in. So again, you can set up unlimited number of trip campaigns and within each trip campaign, you can set unlimited number of steps. So you can totally customize. So let's say in this case, I have no name, no address, uh, no name, no property information. And you see this drip campaign will send out in one day. You can change the timing of the first message. So you can say, for example, let's say this was late at night and the message was supposed to go out. You can see this one. Yeah, so message was supposed to go out in two minutes, but let's say you're setting up at 11 at night. You don't want the message to go out at night. So you can say delay it by 12 hours. So it's going to push the first message out by 12 hours. And then all the steps will get pushed out by 12 hours. And then you can choose, do you want the drip to stop automatically once you get a reply from a lead, a call or SMS from a lead, or do you want it to continue? So what happens a lot of times is you get a message from the lead, you send a message and they say, okay, but you don't want the drip to stop. You want it to continue, you know, based on the uh, communication that you're having. So then you can leave it disabled or you can enable it, you know, depending on the lead type that you have, as soon as you get a message, you want the drip to stop and then you can continue another drip or the same drip later on. So you can choose that and you can set it up and then it'll just keep working on the background. So you don't have to do anything. It'll just keep sending messages, RPM, email, and you can also, uh, if you have a task, then you'll get a task reminder from you simply saying, hey, you need to call the lead. You can just call the lead. So it's essentially, think of it as Drip Campaign as an employee working for you behind the scenes and doing a lot of work automated that you don't have to think about. And this employee will just remind you, hey, I've sent us SMS, I've sent an email, I've sent a drip, I've sent a direct mail. You just need to make this call. You make this call and I'll take care of everything else. So it's really, really powerful. Majority of our leads come from, deals come from, drip campaigns and a lot of investors that we work with, they get most of their deals from drip campaigns. So very, very powerful feature that you want to take advantage of. And then moving on, you can manage your buyers within recently. So you can upload your list of buyers. You can add them to a lead. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly add one. So let's add this property that I've assigned to a buyer. Now I want to add the buyer right here. You can add buyer or agent or seller. So let's say I want to do this is paid in. Manning, phone number. Okay, this and the email is simply.com. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add this contact. So now I've added my buyer. I can call the buyer. I can send him an SMS. I can email him from within recently, or I can click right here. It's going to take me to the buyer page and I can edit it and I can put some information, you know, that Aiden likes to buy in New York, uh, Chicago. And zip codes are, let's say, 60605-10010. And then you can fill out the information, you know, Peyton is interested in single family houses, two to four units. You know, I mean, he has a bunch of money, so he's probably looking to buy houses over 250,000. Cash, of course, you know, he's risk taker by sight unseen. He did 100 deals last year. 
and he's looking to do you know 150 this year. So again, you can completely customize this, but these are the default questions that are added you know, uh, as soon as you set up your account. So you can see all this is filled out. And then you can see as you're selling more properties to the same buyer, you can manage all of that through deals. And then you can upload any files related to patent management. So you can keep any documentation that you have related to your buyer completely organized. So this would be a proof of funds or any other information that you have related to that specific buyer. This would not be property related. And then you would upload in here so you can come back and I review it. And now let's say you get a property under contract and you want to blast it out to your cash price list. So you can filter it based on whether you want to send it to buyers, agents, or both. What cities they have target cities, zip codes, and tags, then you can select them. In action, you can do bulk email or bulk SMS. So bulk email would be, think of it as your MailChimp. So you can do that. Uh, your first name, check out this cool property at 123 Main Street. Okay. And campaigning would be live demo next. And then we have two templates already pre-populated. You click on any of the templates, click next. And then we've already created it. So you just need to replace, you click right here, upload your own logo. If you don't want logo, you can delete it. This would be upload the front of the house, full property address, wholesale price, some other information. You can put link to the URL from recently, the shareable link right here. So when somebody clicks on it, it opens on a separate page. A separate link uh, to view the pictures if you have a links to comms and then again this can be completely customized and then you can send it you can save it as another template and send or you can send a test email to yourself to see what it looks like before sending it out okay or you can create your own template so you can create your own complete custom template uh, add as many options as you want and then send out the email and then once you've sent out the campaign this is what it's going to look like how many people you sent to how many got delivered how many opened, and how many people actually clicked on the link and then you click right here it shows you what the email looked like so this is the actual email that i sent out and i can see if i click on pictures you know this is the link that i've sent out and comms link and then what contact information i had in the system and then you can add your contractors also you can drip campaign and web form would be if you're working with an outside third-party answering service with a call quarter you can give them a web form link and then they can input the lead within reach simply without actually locking it so you just click copy the clipboard send them this link right here and then uh, this is a unique link to your account and they will be able to add properties in your account based on this web form link. So they don't have to have access. And then you can e-sign, you can upload your template. And then we have full accounting system where essentially you can replace QuickBooks. You can link up your bank account. You can add manual bank transactions. And then as you are spending any money, receiving any revenue, you can update this. And based on that, your KPI system gets updated in real time. So I'll give you a quick demo of this. Let me see if I have a demo transaction. Sorry, let me just, okay, yeah, this is perfect. So you'll notice that I have 248,000 in revenue right now, and my net income is 222,000. Uh, this is a demo account. So let's say this money came from ABC Title Company. This is the income because this is incoming, and I received a wire. So I can choose that I got this money from the sale of this property, 1006 School Street, and you can choose what kind of income it was. Let's say this was my wholesale fee. And I can put a wholesale fee um, close transaction. And you can put this as in transaction memo and you can attach your documents, your closing statement, HUD statement, or any other document that you had related, only the file that you have related to that. So I'm gonna go ahead and save it. And when you when I come back here, I refresh. So uh, 248,000, 222,000. Once I refresh, this will go up by, so this went up by 7,000. This also went up by 7,000. This is real time KPI. This is not, you know, rounded up number or guess number that you're inputting. These are actual numbers that you're inputting within the system. And then you can manage, you can do a bunch of reporting. You can manage all the vendors. You can see, you know, how much money you've received from ABC Tiger Company, all the transactions you've had. And if you paid money to ABC Marketing Company, how much money you've made, how much money you paid them, when did you pay them, what bank account did you pay them for, and what did you pay them for? Same thing for your properties. So just by clicking on any property address, you can see all the transactions that you've had. That you've had. This is the one that I just added. So you can see this property I made twenty-three thousand two hundred 
$10 from this. And the cool thing is when I go into this, any property, let's say if I go into this sold property and I go into the financial, there's a tab financial, it quickly tells me what's my net cash outflow or inflow. So green would mean that I have $232,000 positive cash inflow. And if it were red, it would mean I have negative cash outflow of whatever amount was. And again, this is inventory. It's this whole different feature where you can set up scope of work and do a bunch of other things in your inventory sold and rental. It took about almost an hour. So yeah, there's a few other things that I didn't get a chance to go over, you know, with really cool search features. So you can type anything and shows you where everything is based on, you know, whatever I type. So I can go into the property. I can go back to leave. I hope you get a really good understanding of, you know, what recently offers and how it can replace a lot of other features and keep it very, very simple for you to effectively run your entire business. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us through contact page on our website, or you can email us at support at or contact us through live chat. So thank you so much and have a great rest of the day.